Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a custom Google Map. So you might ask yourself, well why would I want to create a custom Google Map? Well the answer is quite easy. I do a lot of reading of uh, photography books and magazines and I quite often get inspired uh, by the pictures and the locations that these photographs are taken. So a nice easy way for me to record those and to help me visualise where they are so I can help plan my, my trips um, is to put them into a, a custom Google Map. Uh, this is quite an easy thing to do, um, but for those of you who haven't done this before, um, I'm going to put together this quick tutorial on how to create a basic custom Google Map. Okay, before you can create your first uh, custom Google Map, you need to have a Google account. Um, if you've already got one of these, you know, you've got like a Gmail or email account, or you've used YouTube before, um, you already have one of these. If you don't, open up your browser and go to accounts.google.com fill out the form and create a free user account. Once you've done that, or you've got your Google account uh, details handy, um, open up a browser to google.co.uk slash maps, and then in the top right hand corner of the uh, browser window, you'll see uh, a button there that says sign in. Click on that, enter your Google account, and we're ready to go. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do next. Okay, that's me logged into my Google account. Um, I know that I've done it correctly because if I look in the top right hand corner of the map, I see my little avatar there, which is associated with my Google account. So to create a map, quite easy. First thing I do is I click on the menu button there in the top left hand corner. That brings down a menu. I click on your places. I then click on the maps tab. Um, here you can see a list of the maps that I already have. Um, but down at the bottom there, there's a button there that says create map. So I'm gonna click on that. That opens up a new browser window, um, and I've basically I've created my first map. Uh, I'm just going to give it a name. So I'm going to click uh, where it says Untitled Map at the moment. Click on that, and I'm going to give it a, a name. So let's call it My First Map. And then obviously you can give it a description as well if you want. Click and save, and that's it done. We've got a blank map. Okay, we've got our blank map. We're now ready to start adding some places to it couple of ways you can do that. First way is you can search for places using the search dialog uh, box there in the upper left hand corner. So let's uh, start with one of my favorite places to shoot. We're going to go to Start Point Lighthouse. It's already there because it's part of my search history, but we'll click there. The map will zoom in. Now if I zoom out a little bit, so I get a better detailed view. You can see it's really put a, a pinpoint there. So what I can do is I can just simply add, add to map. And that's added it there to this layer. And I'll come on to layers uh, in a short while. Um, but that's how you can add in pinpoints quite easily. The other way you can do it, you can um, you can add in a, a place manually just by clicking on a link. So let's say we want to go down to Pro Point here. I can select the pin icon or drop marker. Clicking it like that, I can give it a name. Pro Point. Click on Save. And there you go, I've now got my second pinpoint there. And just by simply clicking on the links, the map will jump between those two points. At uh, a very simple level, that's how we can add um, places to our custom map. Okay, we've got a couple of uh, markers now in our map. Um, but if you can imagine, you might have quite a few of these markers up uh, that you'll add in over time. So you might want to change some of the properties of them to make them more easily identifiable at a, at a larger uh, view. So if you want to do that, you just select the point on the map that you want to change. Uh, you notice there's a little paint bucket icon there and there. So if you click on the paint bucket icon, you can change the color. Now how you choose to pick colors and icons will largely be up to you and how you want to organize uh, the markers on your map. But for example, I can create this one uh, yellow, maybe to indicate it's a sunrise location. Um, and I can choose one of these icons here. Um, there are lots of icons <laughs> you can pick from. Um, so, and you can categorize them, places, all sorts of stuff. There is a one for a lighthouse here. I can't remember exactly where it is, um, but let's just pick uh, the walking man just as an example. Uh, we'll close that down. Now you can see um, we've got our walking, a yellow walking man. Um, and if we go into our other one there, Pro Point, we can do the same. We can maybe give this one a green marker um, and maybe a photograph icon to indicate maybe it's a, it's a big viewpoint. Um, and therefore, when we zoom out of our map, we can see our uh, two different markers, um, each with different colors and picture icons um, to help differentiate them. Okay, another way you can organize all your uh, markers aside 
or in addition to colors and icons, is you can create layers. And um, by default, your first map has a layer called Untitled Layer. Um, if we click on it, we can rename it. So if I click on that, I'm going to call this one Lighthouses. Click and save. Um, and then I'm going to create another layer so I can move some of my existing markers uh, between layers. So I'm going to do Add Layer. And I'm going to change the name of that as well. I'm going to call this one Beaches. Now what I can do is I can grab some of my existing points. So let's grab B Sands Beach here. Put that into the Beaches layer. And I'm also going to grab Pro Point as well and put that into the Beaches layer. Now what I can now do now that I've got certain points and certain layers is I can turn those layers on or off. So say for example on my map I only want to see lighthouses because that's what I'm interested in, in shooting. I can untick the box that says Beaches and as you can see on the screen all the Beaches markers disappear. And I can also do that vice versa as well. So now I've removed all the lighthouses um, and now I can just see my beach locations. Again, how you organize this, very much down to preference choice between colors and icons and layers. Uh, for example, you might have a layer for sunrise locations and a layer for sunset locations. And you can turn that on and off depending on what time of day you're looking for locations to go and shoot. It's a really useful feature. Okay, so I've showed you how to create a map, add markers, set colors, icons, add layers. What I'm going to show you here now is actually uh, my uh, personal custom map with all the locations of uh, places I've want to visit or have visited to shoot photographs. And you can see what it looks like when you've got quite a few um, icons and layers in there. Um, as you can see, I've got lots of stuff going on here. I'm actually transitioning from the old style of icons and markers to the new style. So you can see there are some blue blobs and uh, uh, blue, uh, blue stars. And then I've got some of the new icons there with some of the new color sets. So that's why there's a bit of a mix and match. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff there. So I find this very useful for planning shoots, trying to get some inspiration. You can see where I've used um, layers. So for example, if I want to do some uh, astrophotography, I've actually got a, a dark sky uh, layer there. So I can see all my dark sky um, places quite clearly. I've got other ones for the Trinity Lighthouses um, that are dotted around uh, my area as well. So um, it's a really useful way of recording all the, the locations I either want to visit um, or have visited. Now, of the ones I have visited um, or I've made notes of, if I go into the uh, more detailed view here, um, what I can do is if I click on an icon that has some notes on it, um, you can see that I've added some notes into that point there. Um, another one's down here, I think it's the one at Sidmouth. I've made notes about when I, sh when I should, I've shot this one, so I've made some notes of uh, when I should shoot it and even what sort of um, uh, tide height I should go for, um, and also some examples of uh, other people's work that I've seen there as well, so I want to remember what it actually looks like. So not just about recording the pinpoint, but you can actually use that as a kind of database and you can record additional uh, shooting information and um, that you can store alongside those icons. Okay, one of the other useful features of the maps are um, that you can share them, so other people can either view uh, the markers or collaborate with you and add in markers. So where well, that might be useful, you might have a photography buddy that you're going to go on a, on a trip uh, and you want to try and get some ideas or collate ideas about where you might want to shoot. So um, to do that is real easy. Um, I go up to my map here and I click on share. It brings up the share window. So there are lots of different options here, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you stick in the email address of the person you want to share with and you can say whether they can edit or whether they can whether they can view um, and also you can also make um, those maps uh, accessible by anyone without a Google account so that's anyone with a link so it's not searchable on the web but anyone who has access to the link that you provide them they can get on and, and have a look at that map or you can just make it publicly available on the map so there's a, there are a couple of options there um, to help you uh, share your ideas and also uh, collaborate on maps. So you spent a lot of time creating a map, obviously you want to come back and view it at a later time. Um, easy to do, again, go to google.co.uk slash maps. Make sure you're signed into your Google account, so you'll see your little avatar up in the top right-hand corner. Click in the menu button, go down to your places, click on maps, and there you'll see a list of the maps that you previously created. So uh, click on uh, my first map, which is one we've done in this tutorial. And here, we, for, it gets opened up in basically read-only view. So you can still see all your icons, you can see all the information, 
that you've got there um, and you can see the layers which you can turn uh, on and off as you see fit. Now if you want to make modifications to the map you have to click on open in my maps and this opens it up in the view uh, that basically was there when you created the map. So say for example we wanted added a note to start Point Lighthouse. We've been there now, we've made some notes. Uh, click on the edit button and then there's a field there. I'm just going to write um, probably a sunrise location just to remind me that that's probably the best time to go. Click and save and that's that automatically saved. There's no save button. Uh, all modifications that you do are automatically saved uh, to your Google account. Um, and there you have it. Your map is now available in the cloud and accessible from lots of different devices. Okay, one last tip on uh, custom Google Maps. If you want to be able to view your maps out and about, um, that's quite easy. You just need a device that's capable of running Google Maps and you need to be able to sign into your Google account. Once you've done that, it's a bit like the desktop PC version. You click on Menu, click on Your Places, go along to Maps. There you'll see a list of all the maps that are available to you. We'll click on My First Map, which is what we created earlier on. Click on that and it loads up all the different markers that we had um, when we created our map. Well, I hope you found that uh, video useful. I certainly use Google Maps a lot, uh, not just for recording the places that I want to go, but also the places that I've been and the information that I've gathered from shooting in those locations. Uh, you know, for example, you know, I might want to go at a different tide time or I say that it's not a sunset location, it's a sunrise location. So it helps to build up a bit of a, a database um, of possible uh, landscape locations. Um, now I've done a, a bigger video on general planning for landscape photography, so please do check that out. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Um, please take the time to like, comment and if possible subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notified when I create new video content. Until the next time, I'll see you later.